Hello, friends. It's Hiroja Scheib here with another review of the Mr. Robot Show. On this episode, we're reviewing episode four, Metadata. But before we get into that, I just want to talk a little bit about the Facebook giveaway. Um, on the podcast um, stream, if you will, you'll find that that episode was the previous episode of this. So I encourage you to go back to it, or you can go to our Facebook group at uh, Mr. Robot F Society IRC, and you will find not only the link to the YouTube video, but also to the podcast link as well if you want to listen through um, your podcast RS feed, if you will. And it, it will detail the um, terms and conditions for the Facebook giveaway, if you will, the best description of that, but the different prices that we have available. And it will um, start this, ep- this episode, episode 5, the special episode, No Commercial Free, that Sam Esmail is encouraging everyone to watch live. And um, there will be a live reaction as soon as it ends. I will give my thoughts about the episode and I will announce the winner, uh, the winner, winter, the winner through the random generator from the Facebook group. So in order to enter, you have to be a member of the Facebook group. And so I encourage you to listen or watch the video, the YouTube video, uh, to, to see the prizes and see the terms and conditions. Okay, so let's get into this episode. This episode was a very emotional episode. I think this is an episode that, um, it seems like episode four sets a tone for the rest of the season, as well as an indicator of the overall arc of the series, or at least for that season, and kind of adds to the arc of the series, if you will. And this was a very heavily Darlene-centric episode. Um, So I will go... Um, give my thoughts, overall thoughts about the Darlene situation as I'm calling it towards the end of this review. But yeah, a lot happened this episode and again, it, it's paying dividends, if you will, of consequences and decisions that people have, have a ripple effects and the fact that um, you can't really anticipate or see all the factors or vectors, if you will, of what is going to occur with some of the decisions that some of these characters are making. Everyone's moving forward with this stage two plan. Or I should say everyone except for Elliot and Darlene. So uh, let's get into the episode. So let me check my notes here. So so this episode, you know, I've been saying this throughout the season that it's been a very horror-esque theme, if you will, the underlying genre, if you will, theme. Uh, the first season was more of... Um, heist season and the second one was the getaway and the third is a horror and this is like kind of like for Darlene I would say or the genre of film would be like you know the woman alone alone in the home alone in the situation if you will and the potential attack attack that could happen to um, the single woman out in the big city uh, you've seen, seen some of those uh, horror films or thrillers, if you will, and it's very thrill esque, particularly when what we see um, for this particular scene. And I'm not going to go see my scene, but in order, but just key scenes I think are important is um, we revisit Dom entering the safe house and looking around, and we see this the Comcat um, Comet electric vehicle that she found very unusual. And when it finally leaves, um, we see that Elliot is behind that vehicle. Dom is already into the house, so she didn't see Elliot was behind it. And he goes across to Darlene's apartment. He starts talking to us. But at first we think it's Elliot talking to us, but we're beginning to realize that it's Mr. Robot talking to us. And I think that's something that people might have missed, is that Mr. Robot even has an inner dialogue, a friend, if you will, that he talks to. And he talks about metadata. Metadata is always the little bits and tidbits of information. He hints about the picture and that was um, <clears throat> that everyone takes and sits in Instagram and all the hidden data into it. And he's going through the garbage looking for information on Darlene. He's not really finding much, if you will. So he uh, lockpicks his way into the, Darlene's apartment, checks it out. This is when he pops up with a camera. Dom and her um, f- partner there, uh, I think his name is Grant, see that a, um, Elliot's in the apartment that we know from last episode they realized they got fish and they're wondering where Darlene's at so Tom's trying to call her to warn her that Ellie's in the apartment but Darlene left her phone behind in the apartment 
and so they're wondering where where she's at, where she's at, and um, the partner realizes that from the cameras that Darlene is coming up the street. So Tom, Dom makes a quick, quick plan. She picks up her purse, goes back out the door. Darlene sees her, um, goes behind her, says, "Be cool, um, Elliot fish us, don't blow your cover." And so Darlene now has to enter the apartment with Elliot in there, and Elliot is sitting in the apartment, and he's looking very peeved and darling you know feeling very violated it's like wondering what the hell he's doing here and he's like straight to business since this is how we know it's mr robot he's like you know how can you afford this apartment what are you doing here you know he goes i thought you were supposed to be up north and darling's like it's none of your business how i afford this apartment or what i'm doing he goes i know you know you hacked me i know you put a device that you know captured my information and stuff like that and she goes, well, yeah, I don't trust you, you know, and he starts getting very, almost close to very physical and very violent, and Darlene says, I'll scream my head off, I don't trust you, um, you're not going to hurt me, and that's when it fades from Mr. Robot to Elliot, and Elliot's like, it's not me, I don't want to do this, I'm sorry, he doesn't realize where he's at, and she goes, she doesn't, she can't tell, she knows there's a difference, but she can't tell really who it is she's speaking to. She goes, if it's him I'm speaking to, you know, <clears throat> yeah, you know, I basically hacked you and stuff. I, I don't trust you. I don't trust what's going on. And Elliot's like, well, you know, he had a, like, this voice box thing to disguise their voice so the FBI can't um, listen into the apartment conversation. So this conversation is pretty secret. And Elliot's like, you need to come with me. I have some research. I need to show you something. And Darlene, at first, is not very trusting. She goes, it's you know, it's important, I'm sorry, it's not me, and she goes, you know, I try to tell you this, you can't control him, you know, this is, this is not going to work out, you know, what we started, this, it's not a good thing, but um, Elliot was able to convince Darlene to leave the apartment and go back to his apartment, and he tries to, to show her his research, saying that, you know, stage two is still going on, and Darlene's like, is this Tyra Wellick, and this is when Elliot finally confirms that, yeah, <coughs> He is in, you know, in contact with Tyra Wellick and that they're still doing stage two. It wasn't called off that, you know, Darlene was correct and that he's been trying to delay it, um, trying to prevent, you know, moving the shipments and stuff. We already kind of know what Elliot's plan is and Darlene's just calling him on this bullshit. He says, let's, you need to talk to me. You need to tell me what's going on. And she goes, you could have given this information and not a step to the FBI. Why have you done that? You could have ended this at any moment. And Elliot confesses that, you know, there's a part of him, not necessarily the Mr. Robot part of him, but there's a part of him that doesn't want this to um, end. He doesn't want this to end. He wants to see where it goes. And Darlene's like, that's dangerous. It's, 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 you know, they want to blow up a building, basically. You know, we can't do this. And Elliot's asking her to kind of monitor and watch him. Um, the apartment next to him, which was... Um, Shayla's apartment, he still has the keys to his fake end. He goes, you can stay here and help watch me because, it, you know, while he, Elliot, in the daytime is Elliot, at night, you know, Mr. Robot is here. And <clears throat> Darlene agrees to this. She agrees to start monitoring Elliot and helping him and, you know, following him and figuring out what's going on and seeing where he's going. And um, they kind of stick with, with that, um, you know, Elliot comes back later on in the day. Um, Darlene's there in the apartment, um, kind of holed up with her backpack and her laptop, waiting for Elliot to come back from work. Um, you know, she catches Elliot coming back to the apartment, and she's wondering why he looks so Marnie. And he's like, uh, you know, this is work, you know, for him and stuff like that. He just got back from a work party. And she, he goes, like, maybe we need to have a signal. And she goes, well, why don't we just communicate and talk to each other? And he goes, that's good enough. And she goes, what are you doing now? He goes, well, I'm going to go walk Flipper. So she goes, okay. So she goes with her brother and starts, <clears throat> they go for a walk and they start having a conversation. They start talking about, you know, the fact that Elliot hasn't been talking to her and her Darlene's position on all of this. And Darlene's like, well, what if I follow him and things go south, goes bad? Will you, you know, will you, Elliot, seek vengeance against the Dark Army? And she goes, I'll do the same for you, like if something happens to you. Let's make a vengeance pack. And Elliot's like, do you really want to do that? She goes, yeah, let's make a vengeance pack. We're, we're in this together. You know, we, we need to kind of stop 
stop what's going on. And again, as they're walking Flipper, you can kind of see in the background like the decay of the city, uh, the decay of what's going on, the after effects of what it is that they have done. So they agree to this vengeance pack, and again, I'll, I'll give my thoughts about the whole Darling situation in this. And from there, you know, they finish the walk, they have this conversation, um, and then Elliot, you know, at one point wakes up in the night, like around one or two in the morning, and leaves the apartment, and he's Mr. Robot again. So Darling starts shadowing him, and he goes to the subway system, and Darling's following him. And I was actually very frightened for Darling because you're going past all these like homeless encampments. It's very dark. There's very little light. There's trash over the streets. And I just kept thinking, like, this is like the part of like one of those uh, thrillers or city horror films where she gets like snatched or something like that. And that doesn't happen to her, but that could potentially happen. You know, we know Dark Army has shadowed Elliot or. Mr. Robot in the past and could be still shadowing him. <coughs> they definitely know that Darlene's a snitch, so she could be, be there could be two sets of shadows, one on Elliot and one on Darlene. And Darlene follows and sees that he's with, you know, he does an evasive move and sees and she's able to double back because she knows his, she knows how Elliot or Mr. Robot operates. She knows the same um, evasive maneuvers that he does, and she realizes that he's with Angela and they get into a cab and take off and this is when she realizes just kind of the <clears throat> the depth of the deception that Mr. Robot um, has done or Elliot has done you know he's working with Tyra Wallet to continue stage two and he's working with Angela and this at this point I think that Darlene realizes that maybe she can't save her brother because this whole time like the immunity agreement um, her evasiveness with the FBI not conveying complete information to them was her protection of Elliot. You know, she knows Elliot's illness. She, she is, her, is her brother. She loves him. She wants to be with him. She wants a stronger relationship with Elliot. They only have each other really in the world. Their mother is really not in the picture. She's, you know, whatever. We don't really know what went wrong with Elliot's mother, but she's, she's not there, basically. Um, so... This is when Darlene comes up with this plan, and she ends up meeting, meeting later on with Dom in a bar. And um, she asks Dom to give her a whiskey, and Dom's like, we can't meet like this. This is not protocol, you know, total FBI. She says, well, maybe for once I want to be like a normal person and not, you know, betraying people, basically, and doing all this. And Dom's like trying to reassure her, saying, you know, I know this is very hard for you, but we need information. I've been covering your ass for a week. We need to know what's going on. She goes, yeah, uh, we're going to do things my way. I'm not going to wear a wire. I'm not going to do anything like that. But I have something big. We need to do it my way. And she starts talking do to Dom, like, you know, buy me a drink. Dom buys her a drink. You know, you never said where you were from Jersey. And Dom's like, I can't have this conversation with you. <laughs> she goes, do you want to do this? Do you want to get this done? Come on. So Dom's like, he tells her where she was from Jersey. <clears throat> Basically, you know, Darlene was social engineering her, and we'll get back to that in a moment. You know, asking her about her brothers, her family, her home life, and I guess Darlene has come up with her own little action plan because um, she basically tells Dom, you know, it doesn't matter what she does, she's screwed. Um, you know, it's confirmed through this conversation that Dom is, you know, something that we already kind of hinted or knew, uh, that she's a lesbian, um, that she's in a relationship, somewhat relationship, if you will. Um, but she lost Cisco, which, from all indications from her conversation with Dom, the way she's been reacting to her brother about, you know, Cisco dying, um, when she was, um, waiting for Elliot to return from work, she's looking at, um, uh, vacation packages to Budapest, um, it's something that her and Cisco had talked about doing, you know, doing normal things, and one of them would be, like, going somewhere around the world, if you will, um. You know, she lost the love of her life. Um, she has no friends. They're all pretty much, to, for our, from her perspective, dead. We still haven't seen Trenton, Molly, or Leon. They're still out there in the wild. They're the, where are they this, you know, this season? Um, you know, she's alone. She's by herself. She doesn't really have Elliot. Elliot is Mr. Robot, really, for the most part. Um, she can't really trust him, and she can't save him. And she's going to end up losing Elliot because he's so in deep in this. And there's nothing that she can do to protect him, really. 
or even undo what's going on. Um, but she still thinks she has a plan that may end up either stopping Seishu in some way and possibly save Elliot, but the consequences will be that maybe, you know, she might not survive this. And that's why she made that adventures pack, I think. Uh, but I'll give, get more into that um, later on. Um, what else? Okay, so there's an earlier scene where Darlene was um, on the subway. And she had fallen asleep. She's going back to, I guess, her apartment or somewhere. And she realized she got pickpocketed. And she hones in on the pickpocketer. And I talk about this in my Pulp Fiction review. I encourage you to um, listen to it. Because it does have some thematic influences on this season in particular. But the series overall, Mr. Robot. And she, you know, she confesses to the pickpocketer that she murdered uh, Susan Jacobs, basically. And that she's responsible for the 5-9 hack. Uh, and, you know, she's feeling like this weight, this, the guilt of what she has done, the consequences of all her actions, if you will, individually and as part of the group of F Society. And she made this kind of random confession and handed off her wallet, basically, to the pickpocketer. She just wanted this picture she had taken from... Um, Elliot's par uh, apartment, which um, we eventually see when she comes back to the apartment after um, enacting her plan, if you will. Um, she returns it to Elliot's um, apartment. He's not there. She's been waiting all day for him to return back from wherever he went to. And we'll get back to where he went to. Um, you know, she leaves Shayla's apartment, goes to his apartment. I'm wondering if maybe she takes Flipper because <laughs> that poor dog with the way Mr. Rao is in and out leaving and Elliot going to work, I, I'm wondering, you know, if he's shitting all over the apartment, if he's getting walked, and that, that poor dog, if you will. Um, she leaves a picture behind, which is a, the family portrait. You can kind of see it's um, Mr. You know, Elliot, their, their parents and Elliot and Darlene as kids together. And um, I'm assuming... Um, a very happy moment for the both of them and that pretty much ends the episode right there that last scene if you will um, now to where Elliot went to when he was Mr. Robot uh, he meets up with you know he's with Angela and Tyra Wellick and is revealed from Mr. Robot or at least from Angela discussing to Tyra Wellick that Elliot during the daytime has been moving all the paper records to other places um, they knew about these delays and stuff but they didn't realize who was causing delays and it's Elliot and the manifest is uh, false or fake and it's causing significant delays for the stage two implementation and Tyrell just freaks the hell out you know he's breaking stuff he's smashing things he's blaming Angela for not controlling Elliot he said why did you let him work in there in the first place you know this is his fault he can't go do this back and forth thing he's very well aware of the two different personalities and mr robot's just kind of like sitting there and angela's like we can work this out um you know they have a new timeline tower relic is freaking out because he didn't he doesn't understand why they agreed to this new timeline it's not possible for them to uh ship the records without causing a scene even if they did do it over the weekend people will notice um, Angela says we had to make this work you know the new timeline is September 29th there's no work around it we can get this done there has to be a solution and Tyrell's like no this this can't be we can't do this anymore you know he's out he's no longer part of this project we can't do this anymore and um, he and Elliot get physical and this is the first time we've seen Elliot actually well is Mr. Robot but actually have, have the capacity to be violent and I think is because his capacity to be violent, if you will, that might have isolate, oscillated him because he and Elliot have been switching back and forth, if you will. Um, you know, Tyra Wellett questions him, question, you know, just starts getting that very elitist, you know, put down on Elliot that he's, you know, a cockroach. He's not even talking, he doesn't even know which Elliot he's talking to, you know. And he, he can't do this anymore. He's in a fear of being, he can't believe he thought Elliot was going to be a god, if you will. And they, you know, Elliot, you know, slams up against the wall and basically says this, this is his revolution. This is his plan. He allowed Tyra Wellick into it, not, and he's not to ever forget that. And that's when Mr. Robot starts um, freaking out a little bit because that's when the Elliot personality starts emerging. And Angela notices it and she's like checking to see, looking in his eyes to see which one is still there. And she realizes it's Elliot. And she goes and grabs the, um, the syringe, if you will, to knock Elliot out. And 
Tyrell's wondering what the hell's going on. He goes, it's Elliot, he's gonna see us. And she she's able to knock him out, and it's, uh, and he does see that it's Tyrell and Angela, and he's like, why are you here, Angela? What's he doing here? He doesn't know how he got there. And then she knocks him out, and she says, everything's gonna be okay. And then he starts talking to us, saying, you know, do you see, do you know what's going on? Do you know what's going on? And like this quiet, fading out voice, and then he drops. And Tyrell was just like even more pissed about the situation. Um, Angela feels that she's gonna um, work this out. And I guess we can talk a little bit about Angela's, you know, she's rising in my villainous charts, if you will, up there in the villain world, you know, knocking Elliot and manipulating him so well, um, this Mr. Robot personality working together to get this project going. She's the, basically the project manager, if you will. And, you know, she she ends up taking Elliot to, back to her apartment. Um, and it is revealed um, she's going to take care of it, revoke Elliot's privileges, as she assured Tyrone Willock, and prevent him from, as Elliot, from sabotaging any further sabotages of stage two and getting things back on track, that the timeline needs to continue, that, that there is a solution and it needs to be found now. Um, but back at her apartment in the daytime, Angela calls Philip Price and she tells Philip Price she she needs a favor. She needs to fire uh, information specialist Elliot Alderson. She doesn't need Philip Price to question it or ask her motivations or anything that like that. She says that she does not have authority, but it needs to get done. Period. In the story, and that she's going to return the favor, and that he could question her motivations, question everything all about it. They are hers and hers alone. But the only reassurance she can give Philip Price is she's good at returning the favor. And Philip Price agrees to the firing of Elliot Alderson. And that's her way of preventing Elliot from continuing sabotaging stage two with the paper records. Um, you know, Angela told Tyra Wellick, like, you know, they're flying them in from the west. They're going to move the trucks on the weekend. It's, it's going to work out. They're going to get this done. Um, and, you know, in the apartment, she's talking to Mr. Robot. And he goes, you know, what's going on there? She goes, you know, I just fired Elliot, basically. And he's like, and Mr. Robot's like, he doesn't know what's going on. He already told Tyrell, like, it's not like there's an on and off switch. He doesn't even know how it is that he's even here right now and what they're going to do about Elliot. And Angela thinks she has a solution for this. Um, but basically, you know, Elliot is an element, a factor that they can't control when it comes to stage two. And... One of the biggest threat is, you know, Tyra Wellick is threatening to tell the Dark Army what Elliot has done, that they need to know about these two personalities. They need to know what, what Elliot has done back in their little hideout for stage two. But he doesn't. He had an opportunity to tell the Dark Army when, uh, and I'll get to it in a second, but just kind of finish out Angela here, just going, going by character by character. Um, Angela earlier in the episode had a meeting with Irvin at the Red Wheelbarrow, in the very beginning of the episode and they sat down and Irvin's like okay this is kind of like our Monday mo meeting here and she goes it's Friday he goes it's, it's he looks at her like she's dumb or something he goes it's, it's, it's a figure of speech honey and he goes on he goes um the timeline's to move up to September 29th and she goes we're not ready how why is the timeline a rush there there's delays you know about these delays and he goes there's no can do the timeline set is September 29th and Angela agrees to it, you know, basically. And then she asks Irvin a question. She goes, did White Rose show you? And Irvin looks at her and he goes, yeah. And she goes, do you believe? And then he says, you know, technology these days, you know, look at these ribs that I'm eating. You think they could have done this like 100 years ago? No. Look at all this stuff. It could be in the Matrix for all we know. Look at all the things that you're doing. I, I, I believe the possibilities. I believe in the wonder. And I'll get back to Irvin with that, if you will. There's a couple different things about Irvin that happened this episode. But um, Angela asked him that question, which makes me think, what is it that, you know, everyone's been wondering, what is it that White Rose showed Angela to make her such a believer, um, make her such a zealot to the cause, if you will? Um, is it a time machine? Does she should believe in this alternative reality? Is it some kind of machine that's supposed to magically make all her problems go away? Not sure. But we'll get into that. Um, but the other question was, she asked Irving, 
you know, we, we established an evacuation plan. It's still evacuation plan, right? And Urban looks at her again, and Urban's been telling lies all along, and he goes, yes, the, the, the plan is set. Things are set in motion for basically the evacuation plan. So while Angela wants to take down e Evil Corp, wants state shoe to happen, even though she knows and already seen the economic repercussions, she wants to take out this corporation, if you will, that's responsible for the death of her mother and basically the misery in her life. She doesn't want to kill a bunch of people. So she's not that evil. She's just, she wants her vengeance, if you will. And she's willing to do whatever it takes to get there, but to a point. And we'll see whether or not that point is going to be crossed for Angela. If she's going to make a decision where she might have to take somebody out um, in order to make stage two happen, to make her vengeance happen for E Corp. So that's pretty much all of Angela's stuff there. Um, it was an interesting conversation with Philip Price. It's the first time we've seen him since I think the premiere episode. We haven't seen him since then. And, you know, he accepted Angela's card call directly. I'm not sure, though, if he's going to fire Elliot because he's now aware that Angela has an association with White Rose. So. He doesn't know this is a manipulation by the Dark Army, and maybe Angela's not fully aware of that. So it'll be interesting to see where where that thread goes the next couple episodes. Um, so let's talk about Urban. So Urban's a liar. He's a con man. Okay, he knows how to work people, social engineer people, on an emotional level, give them what they want to hear and believe, um, playing off them, if you will. Um, he lied to Angela. I don't think he's seen anything that White Rose showed him or whatever, but he knows Angela has seen something and believes it. So of course he's gonna believe it to make her ingratiated with him and stay with on, on track and with the purpose of the cause. Um, the second thing is that he lied about the evacuation plan. They, they're not gonna get those people out. They, those people are gonna die if they're in that building, the stage two building. Um, and then, let's see. Oh, he late meets up with Tyra Wallach after Tyra Wallach basically kicked Elliot out of the the gang, if you will. <laughs> and Tyra Wallach is venting. He's very angry. You know, he has significant anger issues. I mean, he tore apart the place when he realized what had Elliot had done with the, the paper records and the whole, you know, two personalities back and forth going on there and just the delays and the frustrations of it and he's pleading to Irvin to remove Elliot from the project that their partnership is over that the, the, their partnership is dead he, they can't work any, together any longer that he needs to be charged and he needs to start doing things his way um, he, he needs more time Irvin saying no can do the timetable is set you know how our boss feels about time things need to go on time he said that Irvin said this to Angela and he's saying again to Tyra Wellick and Tyra keeps insisting on it, and Irvin says, you, you keep saying this like you expect a different answer. It's basically he's saying it's not gonna happen. The, the timeline is September 29th, 10 days from now. And then Irvin starts sweet talking, and he goes, you know, I know you and Elliot have an inter, interpersonal issues going on here, but coworkers have this all the time, and they still need to get the job done. I need to know if you can get the job done, Tyra. <laughs> and he starts, pumping Tyrell's ego. He goes, maybe what this whole situation has shown is that maybe Elliot isn't the god. Maybe because you're here, still standing here, making this work, that you're the god. That you're the one who's supposed to be here. That your purpose is to be here. This is your moment. And it was such, as I said in my live reaction, it was such a, a weird, like, 80s guru conversation where, like, the the young protagonist is having doubts about his ability and the old master is pumping him up and letting him know that, you know, you can do this kid, you know, is your purpose in life, you know, this is how you're going to do it, you know, laying it down for them and it's, it was a very weird, weird, odd situation and normally, you know, the next, this is where I th why I think Irvin's going to die, um, the guru dies, you know, and this is how the Ir Irvin's going to die. Um, Tyrell's like, yeah, I can get this done after being pumped up, his ego pumping up that he's a god and that he's in charge, basically in charge of stage two. He still have Elliot working with him, but he's the one that's making this happen, that this is his moment. Um, he turns to, um, Irvin, he's like, okay, I can make this happen, but 
I need some assurances. He's basically saying, he's like, I need the full weight of the Dark Army. And I need a baby cam monitor back up. There must be something wrong with the servers. And he's like, on Monday, the day after this, the project's finished, he, his wife, and his kid are going to get on a plane and go to Ukraine because there's no extradition there to the U.S. And everyone's like, yeah, I, I, I can look into that. He basically lied, not telling him that his wife is dead. You know, Tyrell was like, you need to go to her and make, you know, make some assurances. You know, make sure everything's okay. He's like, I've been monitoring social media and she's not been out and about. You know, people are saying she's laying low. And I just, you know, he's he wants to know his wife is okay. And everyone's like, oh, hell yeah. Everything's good. Everything's copacetic. So, knowing this, you know, Tyrell's anger issues... And Irvin lying to him, that's, when he finds out his wife is dead and his kids and the child services, he's, we've already seen him flip out before he is going to whoo, flip out the fuck out. Um, I also think that um, uh, Tyrell is not long for this world. As soon as he finishes stage two, they're going to tap him, if you will, because Irvin said a very key thing. He says, yeah. We'll make sure you and your, your wife are, are united together. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that's pretty much Tyrell Irvin. Um, oh, there was a little Elliot Angela scene at the E Corp. He got called away when he was meeting with Darlene. Um, he was checking on the manifestos and Angela kind of came popped up behind him and noticed the screen and asked him about it and he's like oh it's nothing and he gave some half-assed technical answer and Angela bought it but she really didn't buy it and she just wanted to make sure he was going to show up for the the party and I guess it's a mandatory party that um, corporate drones are going to go to and stuff and that was her that was Elliot and Angela's interaction together um Elliot has a cubicle mate that is just like if they had a proper H on R, if you will, with the sexual harassment comments, that he probably wouldn't be working there longer. And it makes me wonder his constant social interactions, attempts to talk to Elliot, even though Elliot doesn't respond back, if he might be um, their inside man in in, in E Corp. Because Irwin said, I thought our inside man in E Corp was handling the uh, delays. And we as an audience think, when Irwin was having this conversation with Tyra Wellick, think it's um, Elliot but it could be somebody else it really was because he was he's next to Elliot all the time and he was there when Elliot um, updated the firmware to make sure that those um, backup generator box things don't blow up so it's a possibility it's a possibility um what else happens oh so Dom there was a raid um, Santiago stated that they, you know, last episode that they had a, a lead on the video offer for the F Society video, and they did a raid, and there's this guy um, of Midi Middle Eastern descent, they didn't specify where he was from, um, watching television in his apartment, and his phone is ringing, his phone is ringing, and he looks out his window, and then he puts his F Society mask on, puts his hands on his head, and the FBI busts him, and, and he is... Um, taken into custody. You can see in the background that the, there's a VHS camera and all this gear that um, enabled him to do the video. And he's sitting there in an interrogation room with Dom and her partner Grant. And they're questioning him, but he's being very big and silent. And Grant's like, you know, Gitmo guys like the big and silent type saying, you know, basically eat them up for breakfast. You know, you're young. Do you really want to go to prison for, the, for this? You know, tell us something. You know, and Dom's like, you know, do you know Darlene Alderson? Do you know Elliot Alderson? Um, do you know any names? And then she goes, do you know who White Rose is? And then he reacts and looks at her. And he goes, and she goes, you know, I really don't like it when people don't talk to me. You know, it gets me really angry. It gets me really perplexed, you know. Why are you here? What, what is your boss? What are you doing here? And he basically finally comments and he goes, I, you know, I, who do you answer to? And he goes, F Society. And he has this very nice, smooth British accent. And so Dom and Grant are outside the interrogation room, and th this is not going very well. And Grant's like, why are you bringing up Point Rose, the boogeyman of the Dark Army? No, no one knows if that person's even real. 
it's you know it's not going anywhere and she goes and Dom's like I'm really tired of people telling me this about the Dark Army and Grant's like well if he was Dark Army why didn't he like kill himself isn't that what they do and you know he's dark he's like you know these dark army hackers and he goes there's something different he's like you know aren't, aren't, wouldn't they kill themselves she goes it was too easy to capture this guy we caught him the, you know the way he did it you know it was just too easy it's like he wanted to be caught and Graham's like for what reason and Dom's like yeah that's basically what it looked like that's the point like what is the reason for his being caught so Dom is basically out there alone thinking the dark army is behind all this while White Rose's plan to find a pivot and put this F Society terrorism thing in the Mid East as a distraction, if you will, or um, a patsy, if you will, um, for for the FBI, um, is pretty much working right now at this point. Um, it's pretty much all of her stuff, Dom stuff. Elliot, you know, the whole switching back and forth between Mr. Robot where it's coming to the point where he doesn't even know when he's Mr. Robot and Mr. Robot doesn't even know when he's Elliot. Um, there's obviously a very wobbly, if you will, sense of shooting um, of who's really in control of anything. You know, Elliot's trying to scramble around and trying to do this on his own and he's now leaning on Darlene to help him. But he doesn't have all the information. He doesn't know his sister's an FBI informant right now. He not even has Mr. Robot. And, you know, he's kind of lost, if you will, a little bit, if you will. Um, and I'm not sure if when we will be seeing Elliot again, um, or if we're going to be seeing Mr. Robot full time. Uh, what else about this episode? I'm going to look at my notes. <sighs> Sorry. I'm a little late. Um. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, so let me kind of get into what's overall going on here. Um, I don't think Tyro Wallach is long for this world. I think we always kind of knew that he was expendable, if you will. The Dark Army kind of wanted to get rid of him first off the bat, but because he was his most wanted man, maybe they thought about using him a little bit. Um, and since he works so well with Elliot, that he's loyal to Elliot, and Elliot is the key to get Sage Shoot to happen, they allowed him to continue on. Um, but I think taking him out might complete whatever White Rose's end game is to blame the Middle East for stage, you know, the hack, 5-9 hack, and put all the auspice on the Middle East and away from China. Um, he might factor into that plan, so I think he um, is not long for this world. It's just a matter of whether or not, before he gets got, if you will, if he kills Irvin for lying to him about the death of his wife. Um, if he himself starts sabotaging sub stage two in some way because of the death of his wife, I mean, he does have an anger issue, and he, from all the questions um, that was asked by the Dark Army of, of Tyra Wellick, he loves his wife. He really does. He loves his wife, he loves his son, and he wants to be with them, but he, that's not a possibility for him. So, yeah, he's a ticking time bomb. It'll be interesting to see if he gets Irvin. Um, if he d ends up being killed or maybe even captured by the FBI um, because he wants to get back at the Dark Army, he might end up getting caught. Um, and if he's successful in any kind of vengeance plan of his own because of the death of his wife, if you will, uh, he's a loose cannon. And so it'll be interesting to see when he pops. Uh, second thing, like the timeline is completely in crunch, entrenched, if you will. It's 10 days, September 29th. When that happens, um, we know it's 2015. When that happens, if stage two does in fact indeed go off, whew, you know, what, that, what does that do for the rest of the series? Because a massive bombing of a building on top of the collapse of a global collapse of economies, yeah, um, not good at all. Um, so, some people's theory about Darlene and Dom's conversation, like the type of questions she was asking Darlene about her home life, where she was from, parents are still living, her relationship status, um, siblings, the type of questions you might see you know, pop up in certain types of financial 
data things when you're trying to make a password and stuff like that for recovery that she's phishing dumb that she gave away her credit cards and IDs for the sole purpose that she's either gonna fake her death or disappear or something to that nature I do think she was social engineering dumb I don't know if she's doing it to steal her identity I think that's something that'd be easily caught if she were to somehow fake a passport and pretend to be dumb I know they're similar enough in appearance but you know dumb's got like a big five inches on her I think that that'd be a super red flag for an FBI agent to leave out of New York rather quickly like as soon as she's got on the plane as soon as Dom notices it you know wherever Darlene is going unless it's like two three hour flight you know if you're going on an international flight as soon as you touch down you're in custody um, faking her death would be very traumatic for Elliot um, might throw off the FBI in the dark army but that would just put Elliot in a spin and I don't think Darlene would do that to him um, but I do think she has a plan and I think whatever the plan is is a suicide mission plan and it is a plan to try to save her brother in some fashion. I just don't think she, I think she's going back and forth on whether or not she can actually save her brother. Because I think she realizes the most important thing is stopping stage two, is stopping the bombing and somehow um, preventing further damage that she has done from happening. Because she, she stated to the pickpocketer in her, her um, public confession to a stranger that she stole from, as she's, she's pointing out to the people on the train, I stole from that person, I stole from that person, I stole from that person, I stole from you, I stole from everybody. The, the reason why all the bad things that have happened to you since the 5-9 hack, it's my fault. All of it. Um, she wears that guilt, and it's been a few months from the timeline we were in September, so it happened in May, so May, June, July, August, September. So it's been, you know, a total of five months that, um, the last two, like season two and season three, have been happening in a five month period. So, overall, there's just six months, nine months that this, all these events have been taking place in the series. So, yeah, the, a radical change, if you think about it, of the world, just like that. And so, she feels a tremendous amount of guilt. You can see that with her walk and going after Mr. Robot. The, the even the further decay, the e coin in the background, the people are living on the street, the rubbish is just all over the place. The graffiti, it looks like a cross between you know, uh, Escape from New York and old like 70s, 80s New York where people didn't go to New York because it was so dangerous and such decay. Then of course, you know, they disunified and cleaned everything up and gentrified the city. So a lot of the character was beaten out of it. But yeah, it looks just extremely, increasingly dangerous. And while we hear ambulances or sirens in the background, like police, if you will, um, I'm still surprised that we're not seeing National Guard units. You know, they had a six day blackout and there were no riots. There haven't been any riots. Uh, we haven't heard in the background any news or any mentioning by any characters of riots or anything like that with the way the economy is going, if you will, or protests of massive amounts happening in the city. It's just a little strange, and I hope they explain that a little bit, if you will. I mean, during the global collapse, there was um, protests all over the place. There were riots in different parts of the world. So it's very strange that this hasn't yet quite happened um, within the Mr. Robot universe. So I'm not positive that, like I said, I don't think Darlene's going to fake her death, but I do think she's on a suicide pack mission, that she has gone off grid, that she's making herself um, as small as possible to maneuver around to try to try to help her brother stop Mr. Robot, stop the Dark Army, and stop stage two. As for Mr. Robot, um, really not sure like with the fluctuation between Elliot and Mr. Robot the way they're oscillating back and forth we saw some hints of that in the, towards the end of season two um, with the shot um, it's very clear that you know Mr. Robot is trying to assert more and more control over Elliot and Elliot is not having any way of preventing it even with the medications he's taking is not stopping it from happening um, yeah um, I, they, I think they need a little bit more explanation on that. Um, I know that Darlene and Angela, and I guess to some extent Tyra Wellick, can tell there's a difference between Elliot when he's Mr. Robot and or himself. Um, maybe not so much Tyra Wellick, because he can be a bit obtuse sometimes. 
but definitely Darlene and um, Angela can tell the difference. Um, it'll be interesting to see if Darlene's able to ghost herself in such a way that the FBI revokes her immunity if they pick up Elliot anyways to try to either smoke out Darlene or try to, in a way, uh, smoke out Tyra Wellick. I also like to know just how far Dom's going to go with this whole Dark Army thread and if she's going to end up clashing with Santiago, if she figures out that Santiago is a snitch or a mole for the Dark Army because that would mean that she's not long for this world as well. I mean, the Dark Army has not hesitated at all um, in taking out people they feel are threats, if you will, to their purpose. Phil Price, you know, he was very prominent in season two and it's kind of in the background here. Um, that phone call between him and Angela, it would be interesting to see if he actually does it. I would wonder if he would do a power play by promoting Elliot and putting him in charge of the recovery program just to see what the reaction would be by um, Angela and the Dark Army. Um, maybe even to try to get Elliot to his side or try to figure out just exactly how important Elliot is because he knows Angela is on the Dark Army side um, and is within Evil Corp and there's nothing much he can do about it. We still don't even know really to the extent that why he thinks Angela is so valuable. I mean, she's a very competent person. She's shown that she has competency. She's, you know, the project manager for Stage 2 has gotten to get Tyrell and Mr. Roa to work together and get things going, uh, managing things, um, keeping to some extent. She didn't realize what Ellie was doing, um, getting the ball rolling and covering people's asses. I mean, she's proven a level of competency, but I do think she's beyond her grasp here, if you will at this next level stage. Um, and that, I think, really has to do with the fact that she doesn't have all the information. If she has all the information, I think she would make di completely different decisions and different maneuvers, if you will. Um, but what she's doing to Elliot, the manipulation to get um, Seishu to happen, to take to take her vengeance, it's just pure evil, really. I mean, she may not want to kill a bunch of people, but she's basically ruining an um, entire, uh, entire person's life, as well as everyone else's life uh, with the destruction of those paper records, you know, collapsing the global economy, if you will. And the rep repercussions goes beyond just people going to debt and being homeless. It's warfare, you know, absolute riots in the street, a depression, a global depression that hasn't been seen since the, the last one that was like in the 30s, which is almost like 100 years ago, really, if you think about it. Um, so yeah. Um, yeah, White Rose. Still going with stage two, um, blowing up the building and with people in it. It'd be interesting to see if, she, like I stated um, in one of my last reviews, if her assistant goes against her because it wouldn't be the interest of China for stage two to blow, to go forward, um, even if it's the interest of White Rose. So that's pretty much it with for metadata. Um, Probably another episode, I'm, you know, an episode I'm probably going to have to, you know, watch again. But I think this is the long term for the series, or I would say series, for the season is, you know, Darlene with her vengeance pack, if, you know, if that is enacted, if something happens to Darlene, whether or not Dom figures out that Santiago um, is a dark army mole, and Tyra Wellick, I, I forgot to mention this, Tyra Wellick controlled the Dark Army. Um, all the resources, the weight, if you will. Um, with a person that just is an absolute complete sociopath. What his plan to get things on track? Because he needs to get those trucks to that location without anybody noticing. And from the preview of season, um, season 3, episode 5, which is um, runtime error, it looks like some violence is going to happen just to what extent the level of violence is necessary for him to complete his plan and still blow up a building and go further from there. Um, I think he's a little disillusional a little bit to think he can escape to Ukraine and still not be extradited after what has happened but you know he's always been a little bit dis disillusional if you will. Yeah, so that's it. Um, again you know there will be links in the comment um, comment section, if you will, or the show notes, depending on how you are either you're viewing this or listening to this episode about the Facebook giveaway uh, for episode five. It is the um, 
Southern Southern Field. Um, it's a lockpick set from a very reputable company. Um, will be given away um, at the end of my live reaction live through a random generator. So you have all the way to um, 10 p.m. Pacific time to join the Facebook group on Wednesday. Um, or otherwise, uh, if you come in after that, then um, you can, you'll be entered into the next following giveaway. So thank you very much for listening, friends. Um, this is Roja Shai, vlogging off of the chat, and until next time.